Hey, welcome back to our technical ear training series. Today's focus is on listening for EQ boosts and cuts in pink noise. In this first part, you'll learn how to spot the central frequencies of boosts by recognizing familiar vowel sounds, also known as formants, within the noise. In the second part of this video, you'll become adept at recognizing EQ cuts by identifying gaps within the frequency spectrum of the pink noise. Part 1. A formant is a resonance within a sound's frequency spectrum. In human speech, formants are specific frequency patterns that define vowel sounds. These formants result from the shape of the vocal tract, such as the position of the tongue and mouth as air passes through it. Each vowel sound has a unique formant that distinguishes it from others. These vowel sounds exist in frequency areas that are an octave apart, and this is super helpful because it means that we can identify frequency ranges by their vowel sound. Understanding and recognizing vowel sounding formants is essential for developing your critical listening skills. Let's break it down. First, we have 250 hertz. It has the oo sound, like boot, scoot, and boogie. Think oo. Moving up to 500 hertz, which gives us the o, as in I don't know, bro. It's the o frequency. At 1000 hertz, we find the ah, as in daughter, ah. Next, at 2000 hertz, we get the e, eh, as in bet, e, eh, e. Eh. Moving higher, 4 kilohertz gives us the E as in beat. E. E. -a -a -o. These are the main five formants that I was first introduced to. And if you've taken any vocal lessons, these are drilled right into your jaw and soft palate. But there are two more very recognizable sounds that extend the range of this exercise. At 125 hertz, we have the uh sound, kind of like the vocal fry register or the sound of gargling, like when somebody is not picking up their voice. The journey is usually the part that you remember anyways. And finally, way up at 8,000 hertz, 8 kilohertz, we have the S sound, S, which is often associated with sibilance and symbol detail. Matching these vowel sounds to specific frequency areas can be an important tool when learning and recognizing these crucial frequency areas. Instead of struggling to remember a frequency number, you can match the tone of an instrument to a vowel sound, and that vowel sound will indicate the specific octave frequency to focus on. So in this test, you'll hear some pink noise, followed by a 10 dB boost applied to one of these frequencies. Your task is to identify which vowel sound corresponds to that frequency. Keep your score out of 10, and let's see how well you can recognize these formants. A quick reminder that headphones are recommended for these tests. Question 1. So yeah, we have a boost of 500. Oh, very windy sounding. Question two. A boost of 1K, so aw. Oh. To me, it sounds like more intense wind. Question three. So this one's a boost of 4K. The E sound is very present. It sounds like steam coming out of a pressure cooker. Question four. Yeah, here we have a boost of 250 Hertz. It's very deep, very ooh sounding. Question five. Here we have a boost of 2K. We can hear that A. There's a lot of vocal fry sound. It almost sounds like frying bacon. Question six. Yeah, 
This one's a boost of 8K. You can really hear that sound. It almost sounds like an air hose or a gas leak. Question seven. Once again, a boost of 1K. You can hear that awe and that very windy sound. Question eight. So you'll definitely need headphones for this one. This is a boost down at 125 Hertz. Question nine. Listen for that E, we're emptying out that pressure cooker. And question 10. And again, a boost of 2K, and you can really hear that abrasive, vocal fry distorted quality to this one. So this video is proudly sponsored by DistroKid, have you ever wondered how artists collaborate on a song? When we created the track Burning Out for Lexine's latest EP, the five of us spent our last day together writing and recording what would become the final song on the album. Managing all our credits and making sure everyone got their fair share of the streaming royalties was a breeze, all thanks to DistroKid's splits. Splits allows you to effortlessly share your earnings with collaborators, whether it's bandmates, producers, or songwriters. DistroKid ensures that everyone gets their fair share. You can add, remove, or adjust splits at any time. And the best part? DistroKid doesn't take a penny of your earnings. DistroKid, trusted by over a million artists, simplifies music distribution. With unlimited uploads, artists retain 100% of their royalties and earnings. So if you're ready to get your music onto Spotify, Apple Music, and ensure that your collaborators are rightly rewarded, DistroKid is your ultimate partner. Plus, by using the link in the description, you'll get an extra 7% off your first year's subscription. Elevate your music career with DistroKid today. And now, on to part two of the video. This section will be focused on listening for EQ cuts. Just like in part one where we learned about boosts, here we're going to focus on recognizing the absence of certain frequency areas in pink noise. EQ cuts create gaps in the frequency spectrum, leaving behind a void where certain tones used to be. Here are a few tips to get started identifying EQ cuts. As much as possible, pay close attention to the original sound before the cut. Understanding how the cut changes the sound from its original state can give clues about the frequency range affected. EQ cuts in the low end often remove muddiness in a sound. This may even cause the top end to pop and become more noticeable. If a muddy or boomy quality disappears from the pink noise, it might indicate a cut in the low frequencies. Check out this video on the mirror frequency effect for more info. In the treble range, EQ cuts can tame harsh sibilants from cymbals, plucked strings, and vocal sounds like s, sh, and ch. If these sounds lose their sharpness, it could indicate a cut in the high frequencies. If the pink noise becomes softer, you're likely hearing an EQ cut in the upper spectrum. Attenuation in the upper mid-range may affect the transient qualities of a sound. Listen for changes in clarity within the pink noise. And finally, when listening for EQ cuts, Consider how the absence of fundamental low mid-range frequencies can affect the sound. If these frequencies are removed, harmonic overtones may become more noticeable. In the context of pink noise, this translates to paying more attention to subtle shifts in the tonal balance. If harmonics become more pronounced due to an absence of fundamental frequencies, it can indicate an EQ cut in the lower mid-range area. Again, this is explained more in my video on the mirror frequency effect. So now it's time for the second quiz. You'll be hearing pink noise followed by a 10 dB cut in either the bass, mid, or treble range. Your job is to identify the missing frequency. Score yourself out of 10. Let's see how keen your ears are at recognizing these gaps in the frequency spectrum. Question one. So 
So this is a cut at 4K. To me, it's, it's very calming and it's much softer. Question two. This is a cut at 500 hertz. It's thinned out. You, you notice the, the high detail a little bit more, and you can also hear the missing O. Question three. This one's a cut at 1K. The mids have kind of mellowed out a bit. There's a bit of a smiley curve. You can still hear the full body lows and the detail in the highs. Question four. This is a cut at two kilohertz. The A is missing. Go back and listen to how that missing vowel becomes more noticeable when you put it back in. Question five. This is a cut at 125 hertz. The sound has really thinned out. There's much less rumble. Question six. This is a cut at 8K. To me, this sounds like you're standing on top of a waterfall and you can hear the rush and the impact of the water in the distance, but that high frequency detail of each wave is missing because you're so far away. Question seven. It's thin, but there's plenty of mid detail. There's low end with less mud. It's a cut at 250 hertz. Question eight. Again, a cut at 500 hertz. Question nine. This is again a cut at 125 hertz. Question 10. A cut at 8K, again with that waterfall effect. Just that high frequency detail is missing. Okay, let's put it all together for part three. In this final section, it's time to really put your skills to the test using the techniques that you've learned. Listen closely to these pink noise samples. Your task is to listen to the pink noise carefully, determine whether a boost or cut has been applied, identify the frequency of the alteration, and keep your score out of 10. Remember, practice makes perfect. Post your results in the comments below, and let's see how well you can apply your newfound knowledge. Question one. We have a cut at two kilohertz. Question two. This is a boost at 1K. Question three. We have a boost at 250 hertz. Question four. Here we have a cut at 250 hertz. I want you to let me know, was this easier after hearing the boost 
Was this easier between question three and question four? Let me know in the comments. Did you feel like this gave you any kind of advantage? Question five. Here we have a cut at 500 hertz. Question six. Really rumbly on this one. We have a boost at 125 hertz. Question seven. Who's frying bacon? We got a boost at 2K. Question eight. Very relaxing. This is a cut at 4K. Question nine. Yeah, boost at 8K. Hope your ears are doing okay. And finally, question 10. So yeah, we have a boost of 500 hertz. How did you do? Don't forget to share your scores in the comments below. That concludes our technical ear training video on identifying EQ boosts and cuts in pink noise. I hope you found this quiz helpful. Leave a like if you did and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to DistroKid for your continued support of the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Hi.